the quality of your life is proportionate to the quality of the questions you ask. Quoth, someone a lot more famous than me. Welcome to episode 64 of the Be Yourself and Love It podcast with me, Anthony Samaroff from Be Yourself and Love It.com. Today, I want to talk about the art of answering questions. I'm very interested in this topic because, and when I started reading, must have been some years ago, about the prospect of asking some weird and wonderful questions, when I read them, I was like, wow, my mind just really doesn't go in that direction. I never think like that. So I'm hoping to help you, give you a shortcut to thinking like that because it just opens up new possibilities, new avenues, new ways of relating with other people. And you can have the kind of conversations that you never expected having before. I remember once some years ago, I was over at a friend's house and a friend of mine cracked out a question like, if you could work with animals to the whole room, um, what kind of animals would you like to work with? And I remember just thinking, I would never ask a question like that. There is another benefit to, to mastering this communication skill, which is you're going to avoid the boring interview conversation, the one that we all know, you know, it starts with what's your name, what do you do, how long have you been doing that for, where are you from, what did you move here for, for etc. And people just zone out if they're new people because they've heard it all before and they, don't, they might not like talking about their job, they might not like talking about where they're from and they just don't feel like you're bringing anything fresh to them. So we can actually break out of the normal habit patterns of conversation and create something a little bit more interesting in our lives. Now, I should point out that I'm not against the kind of what do you do questions. I'm just saying you should leave them for later on in the interaction. In fact, they're going to come up sooner or later. So why jump the gun? Why bother to be the first person to ask a tawdry question when, and I'm not saying that these aren't good conversations to relate to people as you if you watch these or listen to these frequently I've done one called uh, what do you do where I talk about making it making talking about what you do more interesting but I guess the, the principle for this is to go into a conversation try this 10 times and see how long you can go without using a bog standard interview conversation so here are some I prepared earlier and I've used some of these as First of all, I used to use them as conversation starters. Now, I don't like to ask a question during the first early inter stages of an interaction with someone else because I find like it works better most of the time if I just do most of the talking. And I've talked about the technique in the last um, episode of answering your own question instead of asking it. Um, but Definitely, once the other person asks me a question and I feel like they're interested in talking to me, then you can, then I'd like to throw one of these out. And I use some of these frequently. A great one I find, this is a, an imaginative question, an example of an imaginative question. If you could have any superhero power, which would you choose? And that's a cool question. If you meet two people together, if you're talking to two people, you could say, if you guys were a crime-fighting duo, what superhero power would you pick for one another? And I found that they, you know, they look at each other and it provokes a good conversation. You can ask them why they chose that. You can say, would you use that power, those powers for good or for evil? You can go into a big role play. And um, that's, that can often spark off a really fun, lightweight, interesting conversation. You can ask about people's aspirations. A question I love is, if you could wake up tomorrow in any country with any job you wanted, where would you be and what would you be doing? And that's a great way to find out about what someone's dreams are. And questions about growing up, one I thought of recently is, uh, where did your friends and you hang out on the weekend when you were teenagers? Where, where did you hang out when you were growing up? Or what pets did you have when you were young? You can ask them about your talents. Uh, what's one thing that you're good at that might surprise me? Uh, about their peer group. Who's your favorite person in the world to hang out with? Um, or are you the one out of your group of friends that makes the decisions or is it someone else? Uh, you can ask about the preferences. Are you a cat person or a dog person? Do you prefer cakes or cookies? 
biscuits, as we call them here in the UK. Who do you prefer, Batman, Superman, or Spider-Man? Uh, what I like to throw out is, don't you think that Superman is too super? I'm not obsessed with superheroes or anything like that, but I've found that it's a topic that you can keep it light. You know, if, you, if you're struggling to have small talk and just have light conversations, as I did, I used to always focus on heavy intellectual topics, which is good to talk about too, to be sure. But when you first meet someone, you might want that ramp in. And if you're anything like me, you'd never even think of asking some of these questions. But the great thing is it plants the seeds and you can use your own imagination. Questions about media they like. Is there any movie that you've seen recently that really inspires you? Um, uh, is there a character from a TV show, a film, or a book that you really identify with or just found really compelling? You're stuck in a cabin for two years. What five books would you, would you take with you? Questions about travel. It's a great topic. Everyone likes talking about places they've gone or places they'd like to go. Well, maybe not everyone, but many people do. And it also gets you out of just rational, logical thinking into your imagination. So what's your favorite place you've ever been? If you could visit anywhere in the world, what country would you like to go to? You can go on to what would you do there and things like that. Um, what's the most fun you've ever had? A question about interesting experiences. One of the examples I used in the other videos was, what's the craziest thing you've ever done? Uh, <coughs> oh dear, excuse me. Questions about human foibles, I like this one. If people got arrested for bad habits, what would you be put in jail for? Uh, what's one thing you couldn't live without? Um, and then you can use these kind of questions that narrow down to a few preferences. This is particularly good if you're finding it difficult to get much of an answer. If people are giving you one word answers or saying things like, I don't know, um, you can narrow down to a few preferences. So what are the three things you would take with you to a desert island? Or if you could only eat five different foods for the rest of your life, what would you choose? Now, the, I've given you a long list of ideas to start off. I suggest you choose three of them and do a little test with them. Ask them to people that you already know. Ask them to your spouse if you have one. Ask them to one of your kids. Ask them to one of your parents. Um, but it would be really great to ask them to new people as well. People throw one of them into a conversation with someone at work or when you, you first meet someone after you get in the initial stages. Throw one of these questions out and see how they respond to it. If you take if you memorize three and you give each of them a try five times, then you can see which ones actually inspire. One data point is not enough. You want to have a few experiences so you can see which kind of questions actually inspire the kind of conversations you want. I found that asking people, do you like cats and dogs, always got, or dogs, always got a response but I never fe felt that the conversations went anywhere I liked, so I dropped that as a question. So um, you don't want to become dependent on my questions, but I think I've given you enough of them that they'll probably last you for quite a while. So uh, eventually you'll want to create your own questions. But I want to say something about also thinking about when you ask what kind of question, because the broader a question is, the harder a person has to think about it. So some of those questions were quite broad. Um, and so some of them, people will need a certain degree of trust in you before they want to contribute something. So if you can get someone to go into their imagination, if you can get, uh, get someone to tell you about their aspirations, that's really, really good. But um, earlier on in the conversation, asking a question that's too broad, you might get something like, I don't know. So, you know, these things like, what's the most fun you've ever had? Or what's the craziest thing you've ever done? You might want to wait until uh, people have answered questions that ask them to risk less or put them less in the spotlight. I found these ones about superhero powers or if you could wake up tomorrow in any country with any job you wanted are really good for early stages of the interaction. And you can experiment with that and become good at calibrating what kinds of questions that you ask people. Also remember your amount of investment is important. So 
you will want to think about how much you've contributed to the discussion. And the last video I did was really, really good on that point, really good in helping you with that point. So I definitely suggest you check that out. So um, questions regarding the past and future are a little bit more um, broad uh, or, or more open. And if you're having trouble, you can use questions that are a bit more closed and dedicate require less investment from the other person. Another thing is don't be caught out by not having a good answer to your own question. You know, if you ask someone what their favorite color is um, and you then they go, how about you? You might look a bit silly. So if you don't, if you, if you're like, oh, I don't know what to say, you can use your answers to the question to demonstrate your values and things like that. Um, so if I say I'm, I meet someone and in a bar or a club and we're talking and I go, so what makes Jenny Jenny? And she says what she thinks makes her her. And uh, supposing her name's Jenny, I wouldn't want to call her that if her name was Agnes or something like that. And she says, how about you? What makes Anthony Anthony? Then I can have, I can say something about my values or about what is important to me. You know, I say mm, one thing that when I think of that question, I think like, what are the features of my personality that haven't changed? And I think I've changed quite a lot in my life. So I think that one big thing for me is like, I'm always trying to solve problems in my life and get better and get more interesting and get more uh, satisfaction out of life or, um, you know, and, and I also like to share the things I learned. So I used to um, teach piano, but now I'm learning about communication skills and I'm teaching that in my YouTube videos or um, I learned about economics and I, I was learning about economics and I ended up writing a book about it whatever stuff that shows that you're a person that has qualities and gives a lot of avenues for that person to be curious about or to pin on to I remember you know asking someone do you like do you, are you friends with more girls or guys and that can go on to what do you think that says about a person do you get different kinds of conversations out of your male friends and your female friends do you think do you go to your male friends for different reasons from your female friends it's very many avenues for conversation with a question like that and I think you know when I was in high school I was friends with more girls than guys I think my uh, my couple of best friends were guys but most most of my friends were girls and it took me a long time to realize the actual value of having a group of guy friends to do guy stuff with, you know, go out to the bar and have a beer, you know, debate and have hard topics. But I would say um, these days, if I want to talk more, it's a bit of a cliche. I wouldn't say it's always true. I've had very empathetic male friends in the past, but now if I want to go for a vent, I usually speak to one of my female friends because I feel like they relate to me in a certain way and um, that I like. Whereas um, for other things, I go uh, for more laddie stuff. I go, I go to my male friends, and I really enjoy that. Like I really enjoy the toxic masculinity of it all. Obviously, not toxic, but I'm just kidding around. So you can. So I'm kind of improvising around my answers, but I had the questions um, in front of me. You can improvise if you're good at it, but it might be interesting. It might be worth your while to ask questions that might put us, especially if you're not good, if you're not confident yet, if you, you've not got, you're not very confident in your social skills, there's nothing wrong with having some material prepared because it's that practice, you know, you getting confident using your voice, getting confident talking and things like that, that you will um, make it easier for you to improvise. You'll become more relaxed the more opportunities you take to answer questions on the spot. So, I suggest that you email me, anthony at beyourselfandloveit.com, if you want to considerably improve your social skills. And until next time, be yourself. But don't just be yourself, be yourself and love it.